We got some Zelda news stories for today in regards to Tears of the Kingdom. We have some updates on sales. We have some updates on some new content for the game. And just some general conversations we need to have surrounding what appears to be the runaway game of the year so far. Of course, we have so many more big games to come out this year. We'll see how we're feeling as we get closer to the end of the year. But before we get into this video, I want to remind you that we are attempting to get to 133,000 subscribers to match 133 years of Nintendo. So I would appreciate if you go ahead and drop that like hit that subscribe button you know i, I interesting thing happened the other day uh in talking to my children playing zelda they were inspired that dad never gave up on his dream so let's keep the dream alive and well and keep pushing on forward to be able to do this full time that being said let's get right into the news and we got to deal with this first big update on tears of the kingdom because we have sales numbers out of japan for its second week on the market and oh boy it really did super well so the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom maintained its number one spot selling 247,689 units now this is according to the famitsu sale charts now we'll go over the rest of the top 10 just quickly because it's pretty much nintendo switch dominated we have mario kart 8 deluxe at number two at 8,264 copies that's actually now sold 5.3 million copies oh if you're curious on zelda that's now at 1.367 million so 1 million 367 thousand units then at number three breath of the wild with a big jump up the charts moving 7,520 copies it has now moved 2 million 189 thousand 691 copies uh yeah let's just say that tears of the kingdom could very well pass that now here's your reminder the mitsu sale charts are physical only for nintendo switch so we're not counting any digital sales in here at number four we have pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet at 5573 copies that is sold north of 5 million copies minecraft for nintendo switch is at number five at 5507 copies that is now sold over 3.1 million copies we have at number six kirby's return to dreamland deluxe that sold 5360 copies it is now sold 432,000 copies at number seven we have super smash bros ultimate and that sold 4709 copies and that is just shy of 5.2 million copies splatoon 3 is chiming in at number eight selling 4658 copies that is over four million copies sold mega man battle network legacy collection for nintendo switch is at number nine with 4515 copies it has sold just over one million and we have nintendo switch sports chiming in at number 10 selling 3422 thousand copies and again that one's over a million in sales total as well of course when we get our software sales from japan they also give us the hardware sales for last week and Nintendo Switch OLED is number one. In fact, it's been number one for a few weeks now, thanks to Tears of the Kingdom, but it is number one selling 69 nice thousand 341 units now selling over 4.5 million playstation 5 was at number two this is the disc version at 32,553 units now selling over 3 million nintendo switch the base model sold 11,446 units now over 19 million units sold we have the nintendo switch Lite chiming in at 5,858 units now selling over 5.3 million we have playstation 5 digital version chiming in at 4,602 units now moving 496 6,000 units. PlayStation 4 still sitting in there with 880 units that has sold about 7.8, 7.9 million right in that range. Xbox Series X selling 146 units now moving uh, to 185,000 total sold there. Xbox Series S at 116 units having moved 252,000 units in Japan. And then the new 2DS LL which includes just the base 2DS model sold 25 units. Of course they don't make them anymore so they're just picking up the few straggling brand new ones that exist out there but hey that's pretty interesting because we're not done with sales updates because the uk and game industry biz had this to say about tears of the kingdom it's a second week at number one for the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom despite a 73 percent drop in sales week on week it sounds like a hefty drop but it's not too unusual for a game that receives a lot of hype and delivers a huge week one of sales the game became the biggest boxed release of the year when it launched last week tears of the kingdom has now overtaken Link's awakening on switch and ocarina of time 3d on 3ds to become the sixth best-selling Zelda game in UK history after just two weeks on sale. The one new release this week was LEGO 2K Drive, which debuted at number seven. It's not a huge launch for the game, and its proximity to the Zelda launch will have an impact. However, the LEGO games are typically long-term sellers, and there's plenty of opportunity for this game to grow over time. 37% of LEGO 2K Drive's physical sales were on PS5, 31% on 
on Switch and 18% on Xbox, with 14% still on PlayStation 4. A price promotion on Pokemon Scarlet from Amazon sent that game back into the top 10, with Scarlet up 12 places to number 6 thanks to sales rise of 124%. Getting back to Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom's predecessor, Breath of the Wild, is still at number 8, with a 21% sales jump over the week before. Meanwhile, Skyward Sword HD is at number 14, with a 342% sales rise week on week. The Wii remaster was on sale for 15, well, euros, I believe, or pounds over there at the UK supermarket Asada. So there's a sale on the game combined with hype from Tears of the Kingdom. Zelda sales are on the rise. This is absolutely incredible. We'll see how long Zelda can maintain its number one position in the UK and Japan. And well, we'll know later this month if it maintains it in the United States. It's going to be pretty tough because usually, usually there's a new number one every single month in the US, but we'll see what happens. Now, our last story deals with something that I think we all knew it was inevitable, and I never covered this because, look, guys, I was too busy playing Tears of the Kingdom. I was live streaming, picking it up at midnight, doing all this crazy stuff, and so I missed out on some stories, but I wanted to make sure I brought this back around because I think it's important, especially for those of you guys that might be wrapping up your Tears of the Kingdom gameplay. I don't know how many of you are there, but I know there's several people that have like started to hit towards the end of the game, and they might be ready to put this down. You might go, that sounds crazy. Some of these people have 150, 200 hours in the game, guys, so let's just be honest. Some people only put about that much time into a game. They're not going to put thousands of hours in. So here's what we have to look at in terms of the future of this game for content. As I said, this was lost in the fray for my channel anyways, back when the game was launching, but briefly listed on their official website before they updated it, they actually stated there would be DLC for Tears of the Kingdom and that obviously a purchase of the full game would be required. Now they quickly updated this. It wasn't on the website for very long, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we were able to provide a screenshot of that statement that yes, there will be DLC. Now, here's the thing. We don't know when this DLC will be coming. The you know If you think back to Breath of the Wild, we actually actually knew about the DLC for Breath of the Wild before it came out. You could pre-purchase it. In fact, you would get like a bonus if you did that in the game. They didn't do any pre-announcement DLC this time around, and I think I know why. We have speculated about this heavily on the podcast, but it could be that Nintendo wants to position the DLC to be timed somewhat with the release of a new platform. Whether that new platform is later this year, whether the platform is holiday 2024, it is conceivable that they could wait until the holiday period to announce DLC or announce DLC early next year and because potentially in that DLC pack could be a upgraded package to the new system to involve better visuals and frame rate or whatever. And you might go, why would they put that in DLC? Look, it's just to help promote extra sales of the game. So they could do it towards the holiday season to try to promote more sales of Tears of the Kingdom then, or they could obviously be pushing it for a new system. That doesn't mean you wouldn't get updates and DLC and story DLC and all of that for this game. Now, in terms of what could be contained in this look, to even spend speculate on what could be in here is pretty difficult to do because you don't want to get into exact story details. So let's just say there probably will be story DLC just like there sort of was in Breath of the Wild. The Breath of the Wild story DLC ended up not really mattering that much story-wise. I would like to see it maybe matter a bit more this time, but we'll have to wait and see. And there'll probably be things like, hey, the game doesn't have a master mode. Like, that's clearly going to be something they'll probably throw in a DLC. I mean, some people argue the underworld's a master world mode, but yeah, look, let's, let's just be real. It's not really a master mode. So that's probably going to be included in DLC. I wouldn't mind a boss rush mode being thrown in there. Who knows? What, I'm, not, I'm not Nintendo. I don't have to come up with the content ideas. They're the ones that are probably currently developing those ideas. Anyways, guys, you let me know what you think about all this news down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. You guys are awesome and amazing, and I'll catch you in the next video.